Mm, hello. Today I wanted to discuss active ground coupled heat exchangers. What's the deal with active exchangers? I mean, uh, glycolactive exchangers. An ordinary exchanger, if it operates in the ground, our source will run out after two, three, four hours. It will lose its parameters. When it does, Pate. Then you set the controller to turn it off for two hours, then turn it on again for two hours, and so on. This can be done in an especially simple way uh, with the glycol exchanger by making two circuits. I I have a drawing here that I modified because it was drawn by a graphic designer who doesn't know much about hydraulics or uh, Anyway, I don't know too much about it either. I made a mistake here. This sort of set off. This separator should go through this pipe. There is no T here. Yaba. Here is a check valve, but it's described incorrectly. We have two circuits. Do you see? Say one of them is working normally. After some time, this valve turns off, this one turns on, and the second circuit starts working. So it works alternately. It's very simple. Two solenoid valves for the two circuits. We control these solenoid valves with a regular relay, which costs 50 or 60 zloty. We set it so that this one works for two hours, this one is turned off for those two hours, or we set it for three hours, depending on the source. Remember, with glycol exchangers, it is very important to have a good source, which is the ground. When the ground is very moist, we place it in water, it works wonderfully. If it is in clay, well, it works reasonably well. Here we have our check valve, so as not to confuse the direction. Here we have a gas separator or an automatic air vent. I drew a gas separator here, I'll explain why. An ordinary pump, our six row or four row cooler. The air handling unit allows air to pass through, it's quite simple. In the previous episode about glycol ground coupled heat exchangers, I explained the characteristics of the ground. It is explained uh, in more detail there. For a glycol active ground coupled heat exchanger, we make two circuits. These circuits are, say, a tube with a diameter of 40 or 32 millimeters. The larger the diameter, the larger the surface area, thus making it more efficient. That's basically it. Simple connection. The gas separator can be an automatic air vent. If there's a specific setup, I would use a gas separator. Our standard pump, our expansion vessel, which is here. And our automaton system, which we don't have here. Here is the safety valve. Nechaki, which I do not have here right now. But we add a safety valve, although I suspect that the pressure here will be around one bar. A very simple setup, very basic and with simple control. It's very important how you lay out the hoses. I want to show you how to lay them out so we don't mess up, because if you do it incorrectly, then each of our loops will cause an airlock. It needs to be laid out skillfully. Here I have a hoses, diameter 40 millimeters, the thickest ones, the hardest to lay, and I will show you how to lay it out. Okay, now, I'll shut the system. It's very simple. As I said, it operates alternately. Uh, we control it with the regular relay, which costs 50 to 60 zloty. I have one here. I think it might be Polish, or maybe it's an imported one, but uh, these are trivial matters. It works. You can see that it's the same type of relay that could be used for two circuits, and it operates cyclically. It's a simple thing. Now I'll show you how to lay out these hoses. 
So uh, we have a diameter of 40, the thickest, the worst one to lay. Just remember the golden rule, because recently a client was pestering me. He made a large hole, placed it in and thought it gets air locked, but when he gives it a proper go with the pump, it works. We can never lift the check and never have to leave it if Mashkachnai on Ashkomis in such a position because uh, if we leave it like this, then uh, on each such peak we should have an automatic air vent in the ground. Eh? Of course, the pump will do the job, it will work reasonably well. It should be installed in a horizontal position and look at the distance of uh, these say loops if we have 40 millimeters uh, here we have to multiply it by three or four and that's how we place it in the ground but we place it horizontally no uh, it's it's hard to see here but to matake but look at the distance if we have 40 millimeters then we need 16 centimeters here we lay out these loops uh, uh, two circuits of 150 meters each now. Uh, if, if we do it like this, everything will work wonderfully, but it must be in a horizontal position. It cannot be standing or at an angle of 20, 30 or 40 degrees because each such loop should have an automatic air vent. Eh? But if we have a good pump and if we have a gas separator, then obviously they will do the job. But then it's also about inertia. If we lay this in a horizontal position with a distance of 20 or 12 centimeters, it will be okay. We will unfold it like an accordion. If we do it this way, our exchanger will function. Uh, it looks like this when it's on the ground we will lay it out. Uh, I laid it out for you more or less. Distances here are a bit strange. This is cam like uh, because I only laid out some of it on a completely flat surface but in the ground it will work because the beginning is about 20 centimeters higher and the rest you dig 20 or 30 centimeters lower and maintain the same level. Here these 20 centimeters are higher. If we maintain the same level at approximately the same distance, like I said, 12, such as the, like your, or 16 centimeters, so that the tube is in this vertical position, it works. Huh? That, I think I explained it in simple terms. Uh, as I said, a bit higher here and then half a meter later we dig those 20 centimeters higher. We spread these hoses, it all works. Hundreds of such systems have already been done. Once we know what this is all about with those active ones, if those two 150 meter circuits switch every two or three hours, then it works wonderfully. Clients are generally satisfied with these exchangers. I haven't had any complaints. I will also show you how the relic works, how to set it up. Look here at these two characteristics. Uh, open circuit, closed, open, and so on. Alternately, very simple connection. There is no complexity here. Anyone could handle this. How can we turn a simple exchanger into a smart, active glycol one, which won't cost a fortune? Or not a... Uh, Absolenoid valve costs about 200 zloty, the relay costs about 50 zloty. And, well, the gas separator is very expensive because it's like the one for a heat pump and it costs about 500 or 700 zloty. But you can use a regular air vent, a regular pump, you can have uh, an active uh, ground coupled heat exchanger for, for four or five thousand and honestly it's not lacking compared to one that costs fifteen thousand zloty it has roughly the same parameters if there is suitable soil we can achieve this for little money but above all we have a hygienic system that is easy to clean 
and I'm not talking on Lugier, there are no bacteria in the ground, like in other various exchanges where air passes through the ground. And here, uh, here the air only passes through our cooler. But we can very easily wash and clean it so that it functions well. Thank you for your attention. I hope I taught you something. I explained a bit to you. Although this has been more like a talk rather than uh, conveying some specific knowledge. But let's hope that you got something out of this uh, 